الحمد لله رب العالمين وصلى الله وسلم على نبينا محمد وعلى اله وصحبه وسلم اما بعد احبت في الله we reach the second portion of the treaties the second fundamental of the three fundamentals or the second level with regards to the uh, with the second fundamental and this is about Iman and the Sheikh said he said it is of 70 in some branches the highest is saying la ilaha illallah I bear witness openly that there is no true deity worthy of worship but Allah alone. The Prophet said, Al Iman bid'un wa sab'un shu'ba wa haya shu'atun min al Iman, Ru'ahu Muslim. The Prophet said, Faith is more than 70 branches, and shyness is considered a branch of Iman or faith. So this lets us know that there are different levels of Iman. That's, that's the, the point the Shaykh is mentioning here, and he's mentioning the hadith of the Prophet ﷺ, which lets us know that Iman has different branches, like a tree. A tree has different branches. A tree has roots, and it has different branches. As well as Iman. Iman has a foundation, and which is built upon the hadith of the Prophet ﷺ, the hadith of Jibreel, uh, where the Prophet ﷺ was asked about Iman, he says in Tu'mina Billahi, he وسلم, said in Tu'mina Billahi wa Malaikati wa Kutubihi wa Rasulihi wa Yawm Al-Akhir wa Tu'mina bi Qadri wa Tu'mina bi Qadri Khayri wa Shar. He said that Iman it is to believe in Allah, His angels, the books, His prophets, the Day of ju uh, Judgment, and the divine destiny, the good and the bad of it, meaning the qadr. And so that lets us know that's from the usul of Iman. That is from the usul of Iman. So Ahl Sunnah, what they say regarding Iman, the people of Hadith, the Jama'ah, the followers of the Prophet wasallam, they say that Iman yazid bi ta'a wa yanqus bi ma'asiyah. That Iman, it increases with obedience to Allah. Meaning when you do good deeds, your Iman goes up. When you do good deeds, what happens to your Iman? Thank you. Thank you. And when you do bad deeds, when you do sins, what happens to your Iman? It what? It what? Yeah. Thank you. I thought you said it goes up. Okay. Good. So, uh, as this is a principle of Ahlusun. Yazid bi ta'atillah wa yanqus bi ma'asiyatillah That Iman, it goes up with obedience to Allah and it decreases with disobedience to Allah. So when you don't listen to your parents, you do sins, uh, you eat something haram, you drink something haram, you do something haram, then this is a sign of weak Iman and it weakens your Iman. And when you do something which is that uh, a good deed, this increases your Iman, and it's a sign of strong Iman. And Iman fluctuates as well. That Iman is not always the same. You don't say, oh, so-and-so, he's a mu'min, his Iman is always the same. No, sometimes it's high, sometimes it's low. And depending on their level and knowledge and their level and practice, different people have different levels with regards to even their own levels going up and down. So, he mentioned the pillars of Iman. He says, these six pillars are demonstrated by Allah saying, so in the Quran there's also Dalil or evidence for the pillars of Iman, the six pillars of Iman. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, fi kitab al kirim fi surat al-Baqarah, وَلَكِنَ الْبِرَّ مَنْ آمَنَ بِاللَّهِ وَالْيَوْمِ الْآخِرِ وَالْمَلَائِكَتِهِ وَالْكِتَابِ وَالْكِتَابِ وَالْنَبِيِّينَ 
Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says when talking about Iman or Bir, Bir, Laysal Bir, or in this ayah, Walakin al Birra, Men Amina Billahi. He says, but it, meaning Bir, meaning piety or righteousness, is to believe in Allah and the last day and the angels and the book and the messengers and as evidence for the pillar of the qadr Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in Kitab al-Kareem in the Quran inna kulla shay'in khalaqanahu bi qadr verily all things we have created in proportion and measure this is a, that means everything was created in accordance with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's divine decree and there's different levels of the decree of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala or different levels of the qadr and then the third level or the third class as he, he states is ihsan and we mentioned this all this you'll find in the uh, the hadith of Jibreel alayhi salatu wasalam about the levels of iman or the pillars of iman and the pillars of Islam and the pillars of Ihsan. So Ihsan, he says Ihsan is the highest rank of Iman. What's the highest level, uh, the highest level or the highest rank of Iman? Ihsan, Barakallah Fiq. It is worshiping Allah as if you see Him. Though you do not see Him, yet He sees you. This is demonstrated by Allah saying, so he's giving us evidence from the Quran. This is demonstrated by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala saying, In the Allah ma'alladina taqo wa'alladina hum muhsinun. Verily, Allah is with those who restrain themselves and those who do good. So those who keep themselves from the muharramat, keep themselves away from sinfulness, and they do righteousness, Allah is with them. That's what we want to be. We want to be the Muttaqeen and the Muhsineen, those people who do righteous deeds and those people who fear Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, do the commandments of Allah and leave off the sinfulness of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. That's who we want to be. Also, other evidence for Ihsan is the Hadith of Jibreel where the Prophet وسلم, was asked by the angel Jibreel uh, about Ihsan. The Prophet وسلم, said, Al Ihsan and Ta'budullah and Ta'budullah ka'annaka tara fa in lam tukun tarahu fa innuhu yaraq that e, uh, Ihsan it's to worship Allah as if you see Him. And because you can't see Him, he know that He sees you. So that shows you that's a high level of Iman. And that's a high level. That is, that is sad. Because just think about it. When you pray, sometimes we're in a hurry. Especially if we pray alone. If we're not praying at the masjid, praying in jama'ah. We pray and we're in a hurry. Allahu Akbar, Allahu Akbar. It's just so, so quick. You know, we're not given uh, the uh, the pillars of the Salat, it's Haq. We're not given the worship, it's Haq. We're not given Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala his Haq, which is to worship him and him alone. And with that, with not giving Allah Azza wa Jal his Haq, being in a hurry, that shows a lack of Ihsan. Ihsan is to give Allah his Haq, is to know that he sees you. So if you know that Allah sees you, you're not going to look at the haram. If you know Allah sees you, you're not going to walk and touch and go near the haram. You're not going to eat the haram. You're not going to do the haram because you know Allah sees you. Likewise, in your ibadah, in ta'udullah, ka'annaka tarah, is to worship Allah as if you see Him. If you thought Allah was looking at you right when you were making Takbiru to ihram, Allahu Akbar, you would be focused and concentrated. Yeah, you would be concentrating fully because you know 
that Allah is seeing you. That is said. Because although you can't see Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, you know, the mu'min knows that Allah sees him. This is ihsan. This is what we want. We want that strong sense of iman that we know that Allah sees us to help us worship him. So whenever you're praying, whenever you're doing umrah, whenever you're doing any act of worship, whenever you're fasting, try to just think this is for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. I've never seen Allah, but I'm doing this because I believe that Allah exists and I believe Allah sees me. And I'm worshiping him and him alone in accordance with the sunnah of the message of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. So that is ihsan. And then the shaykh also mentions another ayat. He said it, <coughs> it is also demonstrated by Allah saying, وَتَوَقَّلْ عَلَى لَزِيزِ الْرَحِيمِ الَّذِي يَرَاكَ هِينَ تُقُونَ Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, Fi Kitab al Kareem, and put your trust in the all exalted in might, the all merciful, who sees you standing forth in prayer, and your movements um, uh, and your uh, your movements amongst those who prostrate themselves, meaning that you prostrate with the that you're making prostration with those people who prostrate, with Ahl Iman, with Ahl, uh, Ahl Sunnah, with those who worship Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. That is a part of that Iman. That's a part of that Ihsan. That you are doing that with a heart full of love and fear of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, loving Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, fearing His punishment, believing that He sees you, knowing that He sees you, have and doing these righteous deeds in accordance with the sunnah of the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam, knowing that Allah sees you, and put your trust in a, uh, 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 the All Exalted in Might. What to Allah? What to Allah? Aziz al Rahim, and put your trust in the All Exalted in Might, the All Merciful. Put your trust in Allah. That's Iman. And prostrate yourself with those who prostrate themselves. For it is he who hears and knows all things. Allah knows and hears all things. <laughs> he hears all and he sees all. Or he hears all and he knows all. Subhanahu wa ta'ala. So that's why we put our trust in him and that's a part of the ihsan. That's a part of worshiping Allah as if you see him. And the fact that you don't see him knowing that he sees you. And Ihsan is further demonstrated by Allah saying, وَمَا تَكُونُوا فِي شَانٍ وَمَا تَطْلُوا مِنْهُ مِنْ قُرْآنٍ وَلَا تَعْمَلُونَ مِنْ عَمَلٍ إِلَّا كُنَّ عَلَيْكَمْ شَهُودًا إِذْ تُفْفِذُونَ فِي Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, فِي كِتَابِهِ الْكَرِيمِ In whatever matter you may, uh, you may be, and whatever portion you may be reciting from the Quran, and whatever deed you may be doing, we are witnesses thereof when you are deeply engrossed therein. So whatever deed you do, whatever ibadah that you're doing, Allah witnesses it. Allah sees. And the angels see. And then he mentions the hadith of the Prophet wasallam, a very long hadith, which we've mentioned parts of it. Uh, which it's not necessary to go through. Actually, we'll just go through the English because that will definitely save time. <coughs> and this is the Hadith of Jibreel, alayhi salatu wasalam. Once we were sitting with the Messenger of Allah, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, this is on page 25. When there came a man with snow white clothes, jet black hair, with no traces of traveling on him, he was not known to any of us. This is a Sahaba, radiallahu ta'ala, anhu majma'in, saying this. He sat down before the Prophet وسلم, with his knees against the Prophet's knees and his hands on the Prophet's thighs and said, O oh Muhammad, tell me about Islam. Akhbirni al Islam. The Prophet وسلم, said, Islam is to bear witness that there is no deity worthy of worship but Allah and that Muhammad is Allah's messenger. To observe regular prayer, to pay zakat, to fast throughout the month of Ramadan, 
and to perform the pilgrimage, the Hajj, to the house of Allah in Mecca for those who can afford it. That's, that's Islam, as is mentioned in the Hadith of Jibreel. And then he said, Jibreel said, you have told the truth. The Hajj uh, said the stranger, we, meaning the companions, wondered how the stranger asked the Prophet and confirmed his answer at the same time. Because he asked the question, and then he said, you're right, after the, after the Prophet ﷺ answered him. So the Sahabas thought this was a strange thing. How could he, he ask this question and then say, and then testify that the Prophet ﷺ, what he said was truthful, as if he knew the answer already? What, what's going on there? So <coughs> then he asked, then he asked, tell me about Iman or faith. He said, the Prophet ﷺ said, as we've already mentioned, it is to believe in Allah, His angels, His books, His messengers, the last day, and divine predestiny, good and bad. And then he said, tell me about Ihsan. He said, the Prophet ﷺ answered, Ihsan is to worship Allah as if you see Him, for though you do not see Him, He sees you. Then he said, tell me about the hour, the day of the judgment. He, he asked, the Prophet ﷺ said, I do not know more about it than you, as the, as, the, as the questioner. Then he said, tell me about its signs. Tell me about the signs of the Day of Judgment. If you don't know when the, the hour is, tell me about its signs. One thing we learned from this hadith is what? The Prophet ﷺ didn't know when the hour was. So those people who are extreme and say, oh, the Prophet ﷺ knew everything. Nah. The Prophet ﷺ knew everything about the ibadah that we need to do to come closer to Allah. He knew the best, the, the, the perfect tariqah. He gave us the path, his sunnah. ﷺ. However, he did not know the unseen. He only knew aspects of the unseen that Allah gave him. And this was the case with all the messengers after Salatullah, like Jesus. He did many miracles as well. Ibrahim alayhi salatu wasalam. However, they were only able to do these miracles and things because Allah allowed them to do. To show them signs, to show them the ayat of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. To guide the people from dhulamat to the nur, from darkness to light. So this is what the, the, the NBA, they did miracles. Some of them they, and they, some of them they knew some aspects of the unseen. But it's only because Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gave them that power. So we, that's why we don't give divinity to them. We don't say the Prophet knows everything and we should pray to him, we should supplicate to him, we should make dua to him. No. Instead we, we say sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, alayhi salatu wa salam. And we give him his haq and we follow his sunnah. And then he said in the hadith, so he said, tell me about the hour. He said, the Prophet said, I do not know more about it than you do. Tell me about its signs, asked the stranger, meaning Jibreel. The Prophet answered, It is when a maid gives birth to her mistress, and when you see the barefooted, scantily dressed, needy shepherds competing with one another in the erection of high buildings. And this is what we see today. We see this in many of the lands, people who are very poor, who basically, they raise sheep and camels and so forth, but now Allah's favored them with a lot of wealth and they try to build the highest buildings. This is a sign of Yom al that's one of the signs. They want the highest building, let's have the place with the most elevator, the biggest tower, you can see it from here, you can see it all around. It's a sign of the Day of Judgment. This wanting to be have the most in the dunya, the wanting to have uh, uh, the greatest structures, even though that doesn't really mean anything. But people, a lot of times we desire things in the dunya which don't mean anything. Not in the dunya, wala akhir. Wa'iyadun billah bin dalik. Then the stranger left. After a while, the Prophet wasallam asked, Oh Umar, Ya Umar, Atendri Menasai, Oh Umar, do you know who the questioner was? <coughs> he replied, Allah wa Rasulullah. Allah and his messenger know best. 
The Prophet sallallahu said, it was Jibreel. He came to teach you your religion. That hadith is azim. And my advice to you and myself is to memorize that hadith completely because it gives you the pillars of Islam, the pillars of Iman, and the pillars of Ihsan, and some important aspects of the sign of the Day of Judgment. And we'll end there, and we ask Allah the Almighty to accept our good and forgive our evil. Wa sallallahu wa sallam ala nabiyyina Muhammad wa ala alihi wa sahbihi wa sallam.